Hello, my name is Ed Feeks, MPH from the class of 96, and uh, here to introduce our lightning talk speaker, Jill Metlin. Jill holds a master's degree in health policy and management from our school. She has 30 years of experience in healthcare administration, and this experience has made her keenly aware that patients don't always advocate for themselves. Her lightning talk today speaks to how, with just a few simple techniques, all of us can have a better medical experience. Jill, come. Thank you, Ed. Hi, I'm Jill Metlin, and I'm very happy to be here with you today. As Ed told you, I'm going to speak about how patients can be their own best advocate in the doctor's office and how this can affect cost and quality. I'll talk about what patients can do to improve their experience and what the practice can do for better patient engagement. As you know, there can be large gaps in communication between patients and practitioners. It is my belief that patients own the solution even more than the practitioners. As a public health professional and as a patient, I've had several experiences that have led me to take a hard look at this issue and to look for solutions. Years ago, when my dad was getting chemo, I asked his oncologist, is this the best drug for his type of cancer? His response was, well, it's the strongest. When I ventured to ask the question in another way, he said, well, it's the strongest and essentially shut down the conversation. When I called to have my father changed to a different oncologist within the practice, I was told, you can't change oncologists in the same practice. I thought, why, is, is there a law against this? In the end, my dad chose to stay with his doctor and that's fine, that was his decision. It was the patient's choice. It started me thinking, why is there a communication gap? Where does this come from and what are the consequences? At the most basic level, Doctors' appointments can invoke fear and stress. Questions such as, will I need to wait long? Is this the right drug for me? Can set off a whole barrage of concerns. Physicians are busy and have full schedules. They're worried too. And they are at times the physician and at times the patient. So they can relate to these fears. A patient may walk into a doctor's office and have a fear of the unknown. What's going to happen in this appointment? Not feel in control? Maybe not understand what the doctor is saying. These fears can lead to missed appointments, lack of routine tests and screenings, and a missed opportunity to develop that trusted patient-physician relationship. This gap contributes to unnecessary emergency room visits, late diagnoses and late treatment, and the acceleration of chronic conditions leading to an increase in morbidity and mortality. Worry and concern activate our brain's hypothalamus and can result in the release of a cascade of stress hormones into our body. And when the body experiences this activity, Naturally, avoidance comes into play. All this affects cost and quality. Employing certain techniques may reduce the stress associated with medical appointments and contribute to both physician and patient satisfaction. What are simple steps patients can take to better help manage their visit and get the most out of their time with their doctor? Give a heads up. When calling to make an appointment or doing it online, let the office know why you're coming in and what are your concerns. That way you're more likely to get a time slot to best accommodate your needs. Come prepared. Write down those concerns and questions and take them with you into the appointment. Bring your medications in their original container. That's right. Take all your medicine bottles and throw your prescriptions, over-the-counter medications and supplements into a big old bag and let the doctor take a look at them. 
You may think that the information is in your medical record, but maybe not. You may think that the doctor is not going to make any changes, but you just don't know. Your situation may have changed and medicine is always changing. Speak up and write down. What do I mean by this? A physician will cover a lot of information in an appointment. If you're writing things down, a couple of things will happen. You'll remember more from the, vi from the visit because you physically wrote the information down and the doctor is cued to slow down and take a pause while giving you the information. And don't hesitate to ask questions or ask the doctor to repeat something you may have missed. They want you to get all the information. At a PCP visit I had, I had a list of five questions to ask. I was so proud of myself for being so prepared. After the second question, the doctor said, stop, I have no more time for questions. You'll have to make another appointment. I was shocked. Not only was I shocked, but this meant I had to take more time off from work and a second copay out of my pocket. I was not happy. Since that time, I have followed these simple steps and my doctor's actually glad to see me. Because of my work in hospitals, managed care, insurance companies, and long-term care, I have heard similar stories from all walks of life. The power balance seems really off kilter, and I thought, not all of this can be the practitioner's problem. It has to be a joint responsibility, a partnership, a relationship, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Imagine a practice where patients are encouraged and taught to be more proactive with their physician. Imagine a practice where physicians encourage their patients to take the steps outlined in this talk. Imagine a healthcare system where following these steps are just a routine part of our everyday healthcare. Bottom line, patients have concerns and physicians have concerns. How do we as patients make the medical journey easier? Plan ahead and come prepared, speak up and write down, ask questions and get your needs met. Dr. Benjamin Spock once said, trust yourself, you know more than you think you do. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jill. That was very interesting and relevant. Um, I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Um, first of all, how would you suggest a program like this be implemented and what would be the key to success in your mind? Well, I think a program like this can be implemented in any kind of uh, medical, medical environment. Uh, success is based on ownership of the issue. So you need to have in a doctor's office, if it's coming from there, you need to have physician champions and administrative champions so they understand it and learn it, and it becomes the culture of the practice. From the patient point of view, you just have to practice taking these steps, even a little bit at a time, and trying to get a little bit more out of your own appointments. That makes sense. All right, now, as you stated, practitioners are already busy, so how would they make time to adhere to these steps and be in greater partnership with their patients? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I can, I can understand um, that concern because doctor's offices are very busy. I think it's really advantageous to make the time to implement this. It's like anything, it'll become routine after a while, but I think that there's a lot that can be done that will actually save time and save money. Because once the patients are more prepared and come in more prepared, and some of the work is done ahead of time, then the quality of the visit is better and the need for additional visits to do all of that follow-up should lessen. In addition, doctors get reimbursed in many different ways and a lot of insurance companies are offering incentives for better quality care as shown in HEDIS types of measures and other kinds of measures. 
And additionally, there were the CAPS patient satisfaction surveys. So there's a lot of reasons why implementing this kind of program will actually save time in the office, could help the financial bottom line, and will, will result in greater satisfaction for both the patient and the physicians and the staff. Okay, well, that leads me to the next question, which is how does greater patient engagement lead to improving cost and quality? That's a good question. So if someone's engaged in their care and they're comfortable calling the doctor or going into the office, then they're gonna get there sooner rather than later. So if there's something wrong, they won't wait. They might not go to the emergency room unless it's actually an emergency and they'll see their doctor more frequently. In addition, when they get a call or an email from the doctor's office that they're due for their physical or they're due for routine testing, if they have that trusted relationship, they're more likely to take those steps, which will result in an improvement in cost and quality. All right, well, thank you so much, Jill, for being here. I really enjoyed that talk. Um, I also wanna thank uh, our audience, uh, our fellow alumni and uh, others who've joined us. And uh, I wish you uh, a very enjoyable rest of our alumni week. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.